lose my place. Last week, it seemed like it was my week had overcome me. And I, you know, you ever have those weeks where you wake up and it's Thursday and you already feel like you've been seven days in that same week and it's only Thursday and it's overcome you? But the beauty of it is, is that my God has the stability to be able to stay exactly where I know he is. Not where I want him to be, but where I know he is. And Wednesday night, sometimes I think we hurry in so quick and we try to get everything done. And, and, and we, we don't even really get into service till about five minutes before preaching is over. So what I want us to do right now is let's just shut everything out from today, yesterday, Monday. And let's just begin to find where you know He is. How many can honestly say you know where God is? There you go. Come on. You know where He is? He's exactly where you left Him. You either left Him on the pew when you left out of here Sunday morning, or He's in your heart as you're walking day by day. Did you leave him in the closet on, on this morning when you got out of your prayer closet? Or did you lift up his name in worship in the midst of the car as you were going to work? Did you leave him at the table when you said, Lord, thank you for what I have to eat today? Or did you take him with you when you stepped out into that problem that the first thing that came in your job today? I know where my God is. He sits on the throne of my heart. So let's just lift up a hand to him today. Let's give him a, a shout of victory. Let the whole house, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give him a hand clap today. Let's give the king his glory. Let's give him honor. Let's give him what he deserves, our love. Amen. One more time. We thank you, Lord. Oh, mighty God. Lord, I pray that right now, Lord, we begin to cry out to you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Exodus chapter 2 says, And Pharaoh died. The Pharaoh that had remembered Joseph. And there rose up another Pharaoh who knew not Joseph. And the children of Israel went before God, and the Bible says, and they sighed. Which means they started to cry out before God. How many sigh before we go to work in the morning? How many do we sigh when we come home at night? I want to sigh before the Lord this evening and just say, Lord, touch me. I want to feel you. I, I, I know we, we've got a song. We've got some time, but there's just something right now I can't let go. I think we need to enter into something a little bit deeper, more than just a hand clap, more than just a raising of the hand right now. I want us just to get, get rid of all the thoughts right now. If you need to sigh for today, let's go ahead and sigh before God. Because the Bible said that when they sighed, that he remembered the covenant in which he had made with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. When you get to the point when you sigh and say, Lord, I can't do it. He says, now I remember why. Not that he forgot. Not that he forgot what he was to do. But it was now they're ready for me to be able to minister to where they need. One more time, lift up a hand to him. Mighty God, we love you. Lord, let your spirit begin to move upon the hearts today. Lord, allow us to be able to step out of, of the world this evening and step into your presence. Let us begin to hear the, the, the sweet sound of worship. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
can't let it go. I told Sister Crystal this, and I talked to Sister Lauren Sunday, and I said, I miss prayer meeting on Sunday nights. And I was driving down the road, and I said, you know what I miss about prayer meeting? I said, when you walk into this, this church on Sunday afternoons for prayer meeting, it's like walking into a garden. Because as you're sitting in the midst of the garden, somebody over here, the blossom of worship and prayer begins to move. And it's just the sweet smell of the rose of Sharon. I begin to hear somebody over here begin to worship and pray and sigh before God. And it's another sweet smell of the lily of the valley. It's the time that we step into the garden of prayer. I feel that we need to step into that garden right now. How many want to go ahead? How many want to go ahead? We got two hands. How many want to step into that garden right now? Hey Amen. Let's just go ahead and sing. Holy Spirit, rain, rain down, rain down. Oh, turn and pray. Oh, we need your touch again. Holy Spirit.
aren't you glad for that rain? We're going to go. I'm going to ask if the ushers would get ready. I told Brother Scott, I said the other, was it Sunday? No, last Wednesday. Felt like home missions. I went ahead and helped out the, the ushers. We had one or two, and I ran out and felt like home missions. I love home missions. But let's uh, remember our prayer request. Uh, uh, oh, Everett Hatcher. I believe that's it. Everett Hatcher. Uh, he serves on the Quorum Court with Brother Jim. And I know that he is facing some uh, open heart surgery. Uh, Brother Jim would ask that we would remember him tonight. Um, I would ask that you would continue to remember my wife. Uh, she is will be the last one to tell you that she doesn't feel good. But I'm going to ask that you would remember her. Uh, we have some uncertain times that we're looking at. We don't know. We don't have any answers. And so, uh, the hardest person for you to pray for is yourself. It's easy to pray for somebody else, but we, it's hard for us to pray for ourselves. But I would ask that you would remind, remember my wife tonight, Brother Nathan. Amen. Amen. Brother Tommy. Yes. Yes. Hey. Amen. Amen. Anyone else? Amen. Amen. Anyone else? I mean, he's got an unspoken request tonight. Just a show of hands. Amen. Let's just lift these hands, lift these prayers before the Lord tonight. Lord, we praise. We thank you today, oh God. Hallelujah. Lord, I pray that you begin to move and touch right now, Lord. Lord, allow us to be able to step into your presence tonight. For Lord, there is an authority in your name today, oh God. Lord, there is a move of your spirit that moves throughout this church and through our lives and through the things that we begin to pray. Our faith, oh Lord, moves within you. Lord, I pray for each one that has been brought before the throne of grace this evening. Lord, you know the needs and you know the situation. You know what needs to be happening in every family right now. Lord, I'm stepping out in the authority in the name of Jesus. Lord, I'm walking out within your spirit today. Oh, my God. Begin to touch the unspoken request. Begin to touch the families today. Those that need a touch in their bodies, their hearts, Lord. Remember Sister Rose tonight, oh God. Lord, she had a great report. But Lord, we need you to continue to move and touch today. Touch Brother Rick's today. Oh, mighty God. We thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, mighty God. Mighty God. Oh, we thank you today. Hallelujah. You may be seated before we sing one more song. I'm just going to go ahead and make our announcements. Uh, this Sunday evening, we're going to gather here 6, 6, 15-ish. Uh, we're going to have a, we're, we have our annual uh, conference, in which we, we, we had to cancel it in Hot Springs, where Sunday we would have been at Hot Springs, but we're going to go ahead and live stream it from Nashville. I want to encourage everybody to come. We're going to have a little prayer meeting before. Uh, we may have a little bit of worship before we get into. But I want you to come pray and expect something. Not only that, I want you to come be praying for not just this church, but all the churches that will be participating in this, that God will begin to move and strengthen. 
Brother G.J. Shoulders is going to be preaching Sunday evening. And then Brother Robin Johnson will be preaching um, Monday night and Tuesday night. If you want to hear some prophetic preaching, Brother Robin Johnson is the man to listen to. Uh, we went up last year to hear him at Brother Stacy's. My goodness. Uh, and I'm sure that he has some very, very uh, prominent words for the church now. So I would just encourage that you come in about 6, 6.15. Be a part of it. Uh, remember Sunday, night, Sunday morning service. We're signing the books Sunday. Amen. Amen. I'm excited about that. How many is excited about that? <laughs> to realize, you don't understand. To realize that in the midst of a pandemic, in the midst of this, all this garbage that's going on, where churches are not opening back up, where you've got a church that's adding members. We've got people who have came to this church because we still had church. We did what we were supposed to do. We did exactly how we did. We navigated the waters, and we're still adding to the kingdom daily. That's exciting. That's exciting to me. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, and then if you would remember men's breakfast this, this Saturday. 7.30, where's Brother Scott? Brother Scott, what's our, what's our favorite word? And our second favorite word? Bacon. <laughs> so come be a part of our men's breakfast. Amen. Let's go ahead and sing one more.
just sitting here thinking my mind went to Jude the third verse of Jude it said beloved when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation and he said I was going to write to you what it meant about your salvation I was going to encourage you what you need to do to be saved. As he was writing this, but then it said, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. And we've got these 
kickboxers around here that like to contend. But when he says contending, it continues to strive. Go ahead and be seated. The Bible tells us that by the testimony of others, we are strengthened. As I thought about what I was saying earlier about the garden, does anybody understand what a testimony is? We're going to open this up. And I've already, I've already got one I want to call on. She's already smirking at me because she probably knows I'm getting ready to call on her. But you know what a testimony is? It's not how bad you went through the situation. But it's the victory that came out of the situation. It wasn't that God took me through this. It's that God got me through this. And now I can give you a victory report. I remember growing up, and Brother Harvey used to hate doing testimony services. Because we'd always want to go back into, well, well, God did this, and I was this, and I was this, and I was this. And he says, I don't care what you were. I want to know where you're at now. I want to hear the victory of what God has brought you to. So we're going to do this tonight. We're going to op open up not a testimony service, but I want to hear victory reports because the Word tells me that I am strengthened by those reports. There are people that are watching online need to hear these right now. So I'm just going to say, Sister Lauren, why don't you just stand? And not a testimony, but a victory report. Spirit intercedes on our behalf for that. And you may not see the victory immediately, but you can feel his presence immediately. Right. right. And to feel his presence is a victory. It's a small step. If you continue down that road, if you continue taking those small steps, then you'll look back and be, man. That was a victory. That was a huge victory and not even realize it. The last one I was doing was just be anxious for nothing, but in everything, in prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God, that the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, that it guard your heart and mind through Christ Jesus. I know that helped me because I was, when you don't know, you have to know that he's got it because he's overcome, because he's the ultimate victor. And he wears the victor's crown. Amen. And every high thing must come down. Okay. Amen. Amen. Hang on, Brother Scott. You are going to, you are going to be the monitor of the... Brother Tommy, why don't you stand and testify? 
This is old school, ain't it, Brother Tommy? <laughs> oh, man. Wonderful, Brother Vlad. So it's so good to be in the house of God tonight. If you had known me before I knew him, you would understand why I love him tonight. You will understand why I can lift my hands and praise him tonight. Simply because he brought me out of the miry clay and he set my feet on a solid rock to stay. And I'm so thankful today that whatever we go through, he's always there. He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you, but I will go with you all the way even until the end of the world. I'm glad for that assurance. I'm glad for the word that I can stand on tonight, knowing that he will never leave us nor forsake us. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil because he is with me. That's what I have to lean on tonight. And that's why I can face tomorrow because I know he is there with me. Amen. 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 Psalms 91, 14 through 16 says, Because he hath set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. If I know the name, you can say God. When you say God, there is a lot of, you might as well turn me down. I'm about to get loud. When you say God, that, that begins a thought within you. That is a very wide connotation of God. Many people have different gods. But when you know the name of the one true God, and his name is Jesus, you know exactly who you're talking about. And I don't have to go and say, my God, help me. I could say that, but I know the God that his name is Jesus. There are other people throughout the name of the Bible that had the name of Jesus, but there's only one Jesus that went to the cross for me. There was only one Jesus that was rose the third day for me. There was only one Lord that poured out his spirit for me you could call yourself Jesus but you're not my God you I'm like brother Tommy said if you'd have seen me before where I was before to where I am today that's how I know he's real there's faces in here that I may not have known you before but I know where you're at today there's fruits that are in your life that is shining today brother Nathan why don't you stand and testify give brother uh, Scott a workout that's right I, I'm humbled tonight and uh, the victories that our family are going through sometimes uh, like today I, I was overwhelmed I, I watched uh, I watched a daughter our daughter in a really bad way and uh, I couldn't do anything but I know that's victory I know God I know he's got the plan he's got it uh, if you knew me before you knew me now there were times that people wrote me off and uh, and I'm amazed I, I miss our prayer likewise we we have prayed for our business let me back up just a minute my biggest victory in two days is our anniversary this lady loves me you know I, uh, I'm so blessed. I, uh, I was all alone and put myself in that position, and God placed her at a church for me uh, 17 years ago, and I'm, I'm, that's victory for me. Uh, our business took a mighty move today due to prayers from our church. Uh, we've been catapulted to an area that I, I, I never dreamed, and, and I give God all the glory. He's, uh, it, it's a blessing. And uh, another one of our greatest victories, and I'll stop, was we were lost four years ago, and we walked into a church over on Highway 5, and our family was waiting on us. And y'all have, have really been a victory to us, and I, I pray that I can continue to be one for y'all. Amen. 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 Brother Hank, you stand and testify. 
I know you got it on your heart. <laughs> uh, just over this past holiday <clears throat> before I went to visit my family I got a text from my brother he says uh he says, hey, bro, I'm having a hard time. And that's exactly how he says it. I said, what's going on? He said, I lost a good friend of mine. We text a little bit. And I said, hey, I said, uh, in a couple weeks for the 4th of July, I'm we going to come down. And while we was down there, my sister asked me, she says, she says, your brother wants, wants you to uh, help minister to him because he's having a hard time. I said, all right. Day went by, nothing took place, no conversation. We sitting outside and it, it happens. The first, time, the first day she asked me, I didn't know what I was going to say. Had no idea. In fact, I didn't want it to take place because I didn't know what I was going to say. Stayed up. I was restless all night. And this is what I told him. I said, you know what, man? I said, this ain't the end. And that's what I want to tell you. This ain't the end. We hear it at every funeral, right? This is what we hear. God said, from the dust you was created to the dust you'll return. Right? We hear it every time. But if you look in Ecclesiastes, chapter 7, it says, Then shall the dust return to the earth as it was. He says, But the Spirit. The Spirit shall return unto God who gave it. This ain't the end, people. In that same chapter, it says there's a time to live, there's a time to die, there's a time to love, there's a time to hate. Well, he forgot to say in 2020, it's a crazy time. We don't know which way is up, right? No, we know which way is up. Because our spirit is going to return to where it came from. I don't fear the one that can destroy just this body. I fear the one that can destroy both my body and my soul and send me to eternal everlasting fire, which he won't send me. I'll be sending myself. This ain't the end, people. This ain't the end. Amen. Brother Darrell. Why don't you stand, testify. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. When I think on the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I praise God for saving me. I will look to the hills. From which cometh my help, all of my help cometh from the Lord. Y'all let a big mouth person get the mic. Y'all should never do that. Y'all let a person that the Lord has saved get the mic. 
Not saying everybody else is saved too. I, I know that. But you know, the Lord has been so good to me. You know, uh, millions didn't make it, but I'm one of the ones who did. I'm one of the ones who did. COVID has taken a lot of people out, but we're still here. We have something to shout about. We have something to praise God about. Victory, victory shall be mine. I thank the Lord for saving me almost 30 some years ago. Um, you know, and God has been so good to me. And I've said this once before. You know, if you just, if you, all the odds were stacked against me, y'all. All the odds were stacked against me according to, you know, stats and all this. I shouldn't be standing before you today. And I've said this before, I should be an alcoholic. That's in my blood, that's in, that's in the family. But God, who is rich in mercy, has saved me and allowed me to miss all that. I mean, I'm talking about mama, daddy, aunts, uncles, who was consumed by that stuff. But God saved me. He didn't have to do it, but he did. Little bitty me, out of all the people that he could have saved, he saved me. And I'm so thankful. Amen. I could have been in a gang. All that stuff, I was in the sea of all that stuff. Sharks of gangs and violence and drugs and alcohol and all of this. All that stuff was around me. And I had an opportunity to be involved in that but the Lord saved me he gave me victory he gave me freedom so when you see me praise God that's the reason I come in here lift my hands that's the reason I come in here and I'll do my dance that's the reason I come in here and leap for joy the Lord saved me and we have a reason to give God praise Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. Amen. Don't go far, Brother Scott. <clears throat> Sister Tanya, stand and testify. Praise God. I'm, I'm here as a sacrifice of praise. I'm a fighter, and uh, all of you who know me know I'm a fighter. Uh, you step into a ring, you're going to take the hits. And, and God and I, he was, he was very clear. Young lady, if you want to be a fighter, get ready to take a punch or two. Um, going on what Brother Daryl said, it reminded me a sacrifice of praise and why they called it a sacrifice. Because when something was laid on the altar, they were taking, they were taking things that they had. And, and we're a land of plenty, so we don't recognize how valuable that sacrifice was sometimes. But they had to take, and they gave from what they had. They take from what little they gave from what little they had. It became known as a sacrifice. Well, now I have a plenty. So what could possibly be my sacrifice but my full life? And I am so thankful that even though I uh, step into a ring where I know I'm going to lose sometimes, where I got no business being there sometimes, uh, a mighty man of valor is not one who has outstanding character. The Bible says it was someone who was hired to keep on fighting until they were dead. And I'm not dead. <laughs> I'm alive, and I may not do the fight right, but I'm going to keep on doing it. So I thank God for a sacrifice of praise, and I'm thank, I thank God for a house of worship that will come in here and be with me while I do that and put all of that energy and lift that sacrifice to the Lord. Praise God. Amen. 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 I'm just looking around. I, I'm going to... Before I have Brother Scott testify, uh, I'm going to have Sister Crystal testify here in just a moment. Uh, in fact, why don't you just go ahead and testify right now. Hit that spotlight right there. <laughs> I, I really do not like to talk much. Um, I, I sometimes wonder, you know, I can, I can testify and I can... I can speak and claim so many people's victories for them because I want, because I don't talk much because I cry. So then you can't talk and cry. That's one of the reasons. But because I, 
love my church family. I love the people that God surround me around, and so I fight with them. And so their victory is my victory. So I look back, and I sometimes I think I don't have very many victories of my own, but God is so good to me that I get to help claim some of the victories of the people that are around me. And that is the most rewarding thing of all because I get to see my brothers and my sisters and I get to know their, the triumph that they've had. I get to see the battle that they've been in and know that, I, that even if they didn't know I was there, I was in the trenches with them. I was praying and fasting and reading and worshiping and praising and believing um, even in a time maybe they couldn't. So while I may not have just a victory of my own that is just so remarkable, that in itself is so remarkable to me. I'm just thankful that God's hand is on me and he's guided me. Um, and, you know, Kayla and I talk about it a lot. And we've talked about it for years. Just the look back. When you can look back and see what God has done for you, when you didn't know he was doing something, and you look back and you can see, you know, where you've come from. You guys don't know me past being an adult. Um, to know what he saved me from, myself. Um, you would see me and go the other way, but God is so good and that he protected me. Um, and I'm just thankful to be able to be in the trenches with my brothers and sisters and be able to fight with them when they need, you know, help fighting fighters. Amen. 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 I want if you would just give me a little bit of liberty, I know we're just about closed. I'm going to have Brother Scott testify. I may have one more. But, <clears throat> darling, if you're watching, turn it off because I'm going to get in trouble when about what I'm about to say. I want you. To, I want to tell you about a lady that, as of August 1st, I will be married to for 39 years. Oh no. She needs all the hand claps that she can get. Amen. And she will tell you that. But I have, this lady is one of the most godly women, women that I know of. And she is going through a battle right now. We are going through a battle. And we talked about it today while, we're, while I was out, out on the road. And there's just so much that I can do. I call her and say, how are you doing? And she'll say, I'm doing okay. And I know she's not. But she don't want to tell me that she's doing bad. She wants to keep doing it. And she goes, I'm just getting to the point where I don't even want to say I'm doing good or I'm doing bad because there's just nothing changed. And that's the truth in her life. Nothing changed changed the valley that she's going through right now we went through 20 years ago we thought everything was and I'll do a brief history real quick she'll correct me when I get home it was 20, 22, 23 years ago she went in to have a, a lump removed and while she was on, under sedation for that re removal to be taken out her heart was still beating 180 beats per minute while she was under sedation. Shouldn't be doing that. The doctor looked at her. They had to bring a cardiologist in to uh, revive her. They couldn't revive her. They called, got her in, got her up. They said, you need to go to a cardiologist. We did an e they did the EEG where they look at the heart and all that garbage. And you can see the blood going in the ventricle here and going across the heart because there was a hole there and going out. She had a hole in her heart when she was born and nobody knew it. At this time, the, the hole now was the size of a 50 cent piece. For 30 some odd years, the majority of her blood was being pumped into her lungs. Never knew it. The first thing the doctor said was, your kids were premature. And we went, yeah. He said, that's why. Because you didn't have enough blood to support them when they got to a certain age or a certain size. You couldn't support you and them. Almost lost her when Joel was born. 
Almost lost both of them. But she never gave up on God. She claimed victory. She claimed, and I think, and I hate, and I'm, I don't want to pick on Lauren, but I've known Lauren for so long. But Lauren reminds me so much of my wife because she's hanging on to the word of what she's got. And she's not letting go. She went through open heart surgery. She's got a pacemaker now that she's had for over 20 years, and she's on her fourth pacemaker in 20 years. You're not supposed to be that way. You're only supposed to, they're supposed to be from anywhere from 10 to 12 years battery life. She can't even get seven. But I got home Sunday. And I always go to her and I always call, you know, I said, how was that? Because I preached Sunday morning. She said it was great. She said, I was laying in bed, tears were coming down. I think she told Sister Anna, tears were coming down my, my face. She said, I think I was about shouting, laying in bed. She said, but that's all she could do. I would ask that you would pray for our family. I say it all the time, that's my heart. And it is. But she's probably the strongest person that I've ever known. If you would ever sit down with her, she doesn't wear her past like a badge of honor. But if you would know where she came from, you would look at her and go, how in the world did you even make it? And so she'll be the first one to tell you, if it hadn't have been for Jesus, I wouldn't have made it. I would ask, and I know some of these young ladies have went into the Sunday school class but there are ladies here sitting here tonight with the same stories that can shed a testimony for some of these young people. Sister Anna, Sister Whitley, Crystal, Lauren, Sister Rogers, Lisa, Shonda, Sister Dana, all these ladies that are sitting here today you are strong. You are what holds us together. Sister Mitzi. I love sister, watching Sister Mitzi just get all over Hank. She keeps him in line. Mine does the same thing. But I wouldn't have it any way, other way. Don't ever think that nobody's watching your life. Because there are people watching your life today and saying, how did you get through? So I would just ask that you would remember her in the next couple of days. She's got this heart monitor on. She can't. She got up this morning, went to Kroger, went to do laundry, and she was done for the rest of the day. So I would just ask that you remember her. Because that's where she turns to. She said the worst day of her life was the best day. Because she found the Lord. She will tell you there was an altar in Colton, California. That she found God and was filled with the Holy Ghost. I'm about to get in trouble, Brother Jim. Because the hell that she came out of didn't stop. She still had to go right back to the same hell that she was out. But she had victory because she was able to step in in the name of Jesus. Sometimes we look for the salvation of God to take us out of those situations. 
But what God wants to do is put us back in those situations so that we can get victorious of those situations and be able to help somebody else out of that same situation. Your testimony, your witness is not just for a point to say, this is what God did for me, but this is what God did for me, and this is how I got out of it. We've, I've been encouraged. How many has been encouraged tonight? Amen. I know I haven't caught everybody. And you know, I'll just, you'll have to just forgive me if I didn't catch you. But I'm going to ask if Brother Scott would testify one more time. And then I'm going to turn it over to Brother Jim. Where's your wife? She needs to testify. Good evening, church family. Where are we today? Where am I today? Hmm. As a child growing up under a minister for a dad, minister for a mother, I was embarrassed of God. I was embarrassed because of their actions because you could never stop my mother from worshiping. It embarrassed me my whole life. That was before I knew him. That's before he did what he did for me. We all, everybody's got their different mire, their different muck. Mine was pretty public. So you can read about it in the paper if you look back 17 years. But where am I at today? I put on that full armor of God every morning. I read my word three, four hours. I can't get enough. I cannot get enough of it. But the verse after putting on the armor says, why do you do it? Why do you put on the full armor of God? Not that you could be protected in your good and your safe little hole. It's so you can speak boldly of the power of God. That's what it's for. So we were at a ball game Monday evening with Billy Freeman, who you saw running around here, went to go support his family and his kids. They need it. Had a good time. But we were talking about the Holy Ghost in the stands. And before you know it, there's other people interested. What is that? Now I can speak boldly of what I once was ashamed of. That's where I'm at today. Then you know other people wanted to hear. Then they want to know where you go to church at. Today, another lady that I've worked with for 10 years, it never knew who I was, asked me because of Nathan's daughter was getting arrested or accosted across the street while we were there. And I had a chance to share that testimony again today. And I did it boldly because I know where God brought me through. I am no different and no exception than anyone in my family here. I am not. God did it for you. He did it for me because he loves us all. And he'll do it for anybody that just cries out his name. And I want to encourage anybody, especially the people that can see me that's not here, cry out his name. You'll be amazed at the life he'll give you. Oh, wow. That's where I'm at today. Thank you for letting me share. Amen. I said I was going to turn it back over to him, but no, Sister Tammy, why don't you stand and testify? (laughs) Thank you. I need a microphone. I've got a headache. Um, I was just thinking in... um, a little while ago, um, you know, when I was um, a kid, I was raised in church. Um, we, I went with um, family members all the time, and um, I, Jim and I have laughed several times about how much of a frustration I was to um, different pastors because I was so hungry. Um, I was just looking for, I knew there was something else, and I, I just, my parents would take me and drop me off. I'd get them to get, take me to church on Sunday and drop me off, and then they'd come back and get me. And then um, my parents divorced whenever I was 10, and my dad would pit take me, my mom would pick me up. And they just weren't ever dedicated. But there was just something in me, even as a child, that I was so hungry 
I knew that there was something that was missing, but I couldn't, I just couldn't figure out what it was, and everybody I talked to, no one could seem to even tell me what it was. I, I literally had a pastor one time tell me, because they'd do the, the call, and I'd go up, and he finally said, he patted me on the head and said, okay, that's it. Okay, you got all you're going to get, that's it, just need to sit down. And I'm sure he was thinking, what is wrong with this little girl? She keeps coming up here. I keep telling her, sit down, patting her on the head. And um, so um, I was um, 15, and I, my parents had divorced, and my mom was really sick with cancer. And I just remember walking down in front of our road, um, in front of our house, and I was so troubled because something was missing and I kept saying to the pastors is that there's something missing there's supposed to be a sign something I'm supposed to feel different I'm supposed to um, there's a sign there's something is there not something there's something else surely there's something else and so I prayed a prayer as I walked my mom had gone to town and I walked up and down in front of our road back and forth praying and I said Lord if there's something else please show me because I just there's something missing and I want to serve you I want to live for you but everybody I talk to they don't have anything else for me and um, so literally two days later my mom came home I went to Benton at the time. My mom came home and said, I just enrolled you at Harmony Grove. And so I was really upset about that. I had my friends at Benton and um, just out of the blue, we had never discussed it. She said, I moved you to Harmony Grove. You're enrolled in Harmony Grove. You're starting in August. And so I walked into math class and there was a guy sitting there he was pretty cute and uh, he talked to me and it's so strange because I knew instantly there was something different about him and we started talking and dating and he invited me to church and you know I knew instantly I could feel something I didn't know what was going on but I could feel something happening something different that I had been looking for and I'm just so thankful that God heard me and sent me on the right path and <clears throat> so I had been baptized before in the titles and uh, I remember the night that we were having a, a revival service and the preacher was preaching and he said started say I'll never forget he kept saying you know come Lord we were asking you to come right now and you know in your name come right now and I, I said wait a minute Lord wait a minute wait. I, I I know I'm not ready and there's something missing and I got baptized in Jesus name that night and it came up and it was the most wonderful and I was so I knew then that that is what I'd been looking for my soul had been searching for for so long it seemed like forever even though I was only 15 and then I'll never forget Regina Fields was there and Sister Crabtree and uh, Loretta Ott and I started praying and I felt like the light was shining it was the widest light, and I know y'all know what I'm talking about, but it shone through me and out of me and in me. And then I remember Sister Crabtree getting in my face, and I said, what is happening? And she said, you're receiving the Holy Ghost. Keep praying. And so I knew then that day it all came together for me of what I had been searching for. And I'm so thankful that God heard my my plea and knew I had a hungry heart and 
I just can't help but think how many more are there out there that are hungry, that are searching in our community, in our neighborhoods, our friends, our family. And we, we have the answer for them, what they, we can take them to Jesus and we can share the truth with them. And no matter what we got to do, no matter how much work it is, when it seems like that you're not making a difference, we are in this place. We are in the perfect spot, at the perfect place, at the perfect time. We, his people are all, we're like a puzzle. As I see people coming into the church, we're fitting together like a puzzle. And his will, with different talents and different just situations we've been in life, that we can, we can say to people, I've been there. God helped me and delivered me and healed me and I just don't I don't ever want to lose that hunger for him or to reach others I don't ever want to get complacent I just you know our motto here is just one more let there always be just one more that we can reach I know we talked about Sandy a lot Hobbs, but she, that little lady did something to me. She was our first person that passed away after she was baptized. And I just, I think of her often, you know, everything that we've done, if it was just one Sandy, it's worth it. So, you know, that's our, that's our goal. If we're going to get through this pandemic, our church is growing people are their eyes are being opened and they realize that their job or that their faith can't be in that there are people that are hungry and they're searching and they have woke up people good people that have woke up to realize that they need Jesus and we're here we're like a city on a hill I'm so thankful, so thankful to be here with you, that we're family, and doing this work together. What more can be said? She didn't tell you what she said to me whenever I introduced myself. I asked her, I said, hey, what's your name? She said, Tammy, turn back around. I, I told my friend, I said, I'm going to marry her someday. And uh, he said, Psh. she's like, no. And I said, yeah. I'll marry her someday, and I sure did. I think I did pretty good. Amen. But what she was talking about is what drives everything that we do. I just told Brother Nick, we were talking in my office just a few minutes ago, and the youth made up a plaque for me in the office, which I proudly display it simply says what our church has always been about one thing that our church is about if you're wondering if you're new here and you're wondering what is this church about it's about one single thing it's not about buildings or politics or who's this or who's that or it's not about money or, 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 or any of that it's about one single concept. To seek and to save that which was lost. 
And like Tam said, there are so many people out there that they're doing everything that they know to do, but they're not satisfied. There's a hunger deep down inside of people that God places there. And some people are willing to be placated with something other than what God has prepared for us. But there are those that will not be satisfied until they are filled. It's those people. It's those people that we're after. Man, I'll tell you, if you've ever prayed a prayer, a desperate prayer, and our church was just born out of desperation, a great hunger and a great thirst, out of absolute desperation. If you've ever prayed a desperate prayer, I want you to know something. I told a, a man this afternoon who's gone through a whole lot, and he's a great man. He's a great man. He really is. I've, I've known and loved him for years. He's just been through a lot. And I, I told him, I said, you know, whenever you pray, know that God hears you. And if you are desperate and you want to be, you want to know God in the fullness of his joy. Whenever Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead, right before he raised Lazarus from the dead, he said, Father, hear my prayer. You always do. And whenever you pray a sincere prayer, know that he always hears you. And he always answers if you're listening. And that story that she told you, that's a sincere prayer. That's a desperate prayer. I want to tell you a story that I've told before, but there's some new people here, so y'all are my new victims. And I just, I just shared this with Nick just a few minutes ago, but talking about hunger and people wanting to be, have more than what they have. How many of you want more of God? I still want more. I'm not going to preach my message for Sunday, but boy, I'm tempted. If you'll stay with me for just a minute, we'll be dismissed. I remember whenever I was younger than I am today, I was working in medical surgical nursing, and I'd worked a lot of shifts, and uh, they called me, and I, I hated working nights, never, never enjoyed it, never did much of it. They called me and said, hey, we need you. Need you to come in and work tonight. And I was like, no, you're calling the wrong guy. Good night. Anyway, a few minutes later, they called me back and said, hey, we really, really need you. And I said, well, where is it that you need me to go? I said, we need you to go to the recuperative care, which was the mix between hospice and intensive care. It was where really, really sick people went to die, but you didn't, back then, people weren't allowed to die. You remember those days. And so... I said, nope, I hate that unit. Good night. A few minutes later, they called me back. And they said, you don't, and I'm, <laughs> I'll never forget these words. They said, you don't understand. We have to have you. There is nobody else. We have to have you. I was like, okay. I'll be there in a few minutes. And I went, and I had four patients that night, three of which were either comatose or asleep. And one lady that I had, I had taken care of for years, and we knew each other well. 
and uh, she trusted me and she knew me and I, she was a, a real joy to take care of and anyway I, I, she was awake all night for whatever reason and I was in and probably because I was in and out of a room all night hanging new IV bags hanging new medications and uh, we just got to talking and, and we had never really talked about faith before but we just got to talking and she said uh, something about her being a Sunday school teacher and she said I've, I've been a Sunday school teacher for 30 years and I said really and I said I'm a Sunday school teacher too and she said oh well where where do you teach and I told her and uh, and she she actually taught Sunday school right over here at the Methodist Church on Reynolds Road and uh, anyway we were talking about it and I told her you know that I taught at First Pentecostal Church and she said really she's like tell me something and I, I said okay and I, I kind of knew what was coming you know it's one of several questions you know uh, let's see do you dance do you roll do you speak in tongues you know one of those one of those questions and she said have you ever spoken tongues and I was like oh yes ma'am I was like as often as I can and and she's like oh I'm, she's like you know I've, I've always wondered about that but I was always taught that it was wrong that it was of the devil and so we I just reached over into the bedside and took out the Gideon's Bible and we just had a little Bible study Sunday school teacher to Sunday school teacher make a long story short she got out of the hospital and went to the nursing home and I went to visit her uh, in the nursing home and m most of my friends were in their 80s whenever I was in my 20s <laughs> so um, that was the group I took care of that's who I hung out with you know and so I went to visit her and I happened to know her roommate too which was an old assembly of God lady and uh she she was an uh, old faithful assembly of God lady and I, I'd taken care of her for years too uh, we we knew each other and anyway we visited for a while and I left and the week after that the lady died that I'd taken care of that night and I went to her funeral over here at the Methodist Church and toward the end of the of the message and there was a lot of you know, okay, get up and kneel down here and get back up and, okay, kneel back down again and now we're going to sing a song about the Pope and all this. I was like, you lost me. But anyway, um, toward the end of his message, he said, she was such a brilliant woman in her life. And as she, as she was, you know, in her dying breath, she began to babble. But she was brilliant in her life and she was committed you know, in her life, and that word, babble, stuck in my mind. And so I, uh, the next, a few days later, I went back out to the nursing home and went to visit my Assembly of God friend out there. And I sat down and talked with her, and she was there when, when this lady had passed away. And I said, during the funeral, the pastor said something that was curious to me. He said that as she was dying, she began to babble. And I no longer got that word out of my mouth. She went, oh, she said, she spoke in tongues. She sang in tongues for hours before she died. She said she was speaking in tongues when she passed away. And it all rushed back to me, the phone call that said, we have to have you. And I want to tell you, each and every one of you, no matter what it is that you do for a living, no matter where it is you go to school, they have to have you. They have to have someone that's going to tell them. The world is depending on us. They're depending on us to be that city on the hill, that lighthouse 
shining through the darkness to show them the rest of the way. And I tell you, I, had, I never had any idea, no idea, that I would ever be a pastor. It just completely slipped up on me. And I was rather reluctant. And the longer, and I had a friend of mine call me uh, who is also, he, he's not a pastor, but he's, he's one of my very best friends, very, very spiritual. And he said, how are you? And how are you doing, you know, spiritually? And I said, you know, I don't even know why I'm telling you this, but I said, the more I let go, the more I let go of me, the more I let go of what Jim wants, and the more I, the less of my will and the more of his will, I feel like I'm just swept away. I feel like I'm just being swept away in his spirit. And that's where I want to be. I want to be swept away in his spirit. And I want the, the, you know, this world is absolutely burning down around us. But somehow it just all seems strangely dim to me. And I just want to be swept away in that spirit. How many of you want to be swept away by a spirit where what's going on here is not really, doesn't really matter that much, only that I want to pull somebody from the fire because this world is not my home. This is not my destination. This is not my kingdom. My kingdom is on another shore. I want to take as many people with me as I can. How about you? Amen. If you'd stand with me. I don't know what we want to sing, but my goodness, I feel like singing something. This is very casual tonight. This is an unusual night, but I'll, I'll be honest with you. I uh, somehow knew that it would be like this tonight. So let's sing something. Testimonies, all of these stories, somebody needed to hear this tonight. I believe it strengthens all of us to hear what, what we have overcome, what we used to be, like what Brother Scott said, what I used to be and what I am today, where he's brought me from. My goodness, so beautiful, so beautiful. Hallelujah. Dear Lord and Heavenly Father, we love you tonight. 
so very thankful for that light that you have shined all the way through us so grateful for that spirit that you have poured into these earthen vessels so thankful for filling us but we are still hungry we are hungry for more pray that you would just continue to fill us with more of your spirit more of your truth more of your mercy and grace wash over us lord god wash over this congregation and bless every family that is represented in this house i pray that you would bless every family that's watching on facebook we love you thank you jesus amen, amen. we'll see you on sunday and uh god has a God has a special word that is prepared for us on Sunday, so don't miss it. We'll see you then.